Hello. In this video, we are going to explain the fundamentals of organization and routing when it comes to a military unit, for example, a division. This is going to be a much shorter video, and the rest of the videos will be on a similar format to this. Now, going directly into it, what is organization war? Well, organization is literally what holds a unit together. So, all of the things we described prior, and we will describe forward from firepower to the ability to break the lines, to the equipment they use, the quality of the troops, all of the things coming together, a unit has a set amount of organization. And organization is something that can be expanded or reduced. While if a unit moves, if your unit attacks, if it receives firepower, or if, if something big happens, or the factors I mentioned here. So the communication network, for example, of a division or a brigade, a collection of 10,000 men or 7,000 men, a communication network between them is the fundamental basis of the organizational structure. How good the troops are trained really it plays a huge role in maintaining that organization. So if they are conscripts, it's much more likely to lose their organization than professional soldiers. The discipline of those troops, very high disciplined troops in severe circumstances will continue to do their duty continue to do their duty without massively retreating and thus not losing organization. Battle fatigue, which means continuously fighting the enemy being exhausted. How well you have you can supply your forces and maintain a supply line from uh, providing food to simply providing um, uh, ammunition and so forth. The morale, militarism, of one force, so how fanatical are the troops in fighting? So you can have, for example, the Japanese forces in World War II, which they will take 70-80% casualties before they get routed, thus implying that the organization, despite all of the losses, still managed to main to maintain a very high level of organization, while British troops or American troops could receive 10 or 20% of casualties and the organization will reduce to a point that they will stop attacking or in case they were defending they will retreat now yes many factors impact organization and it, randomness geography entrenchment how concentrated forces are and many other variables to play an important role now to give you a more clear example of what in practical sense organization is so imagine you have a unit so in this case this division so divisions as we said last time is like 12 to 20 thousand troops and it has a set amount of manpower a set amount of equipment a set amount of quality of equipment so let's say that unit has been battling for a few days now it hasn't been in heavy battles it has 80 uh, percent let's say uh, of its total manpower and firepower but it's, let's say, well rested. So we can say that this is their non-organizational based battle power. Let's call it that. Now, that unit, the moment it either moves or it attacks an enemy or it gets attacked on some vital points, for example, their logistics networks or their roads or something happens that uh, surprises the troops or a portion of the uh, front line collapses and they massively retreat, then something starts to happen to those troops. So here you see the, it's like the organization level gradually gets reduced as battle moves on, the organization level of that unit continues to decrease. Now, what that implies in practicality. Imagine organization being that force, as we mentioned now, that 80 force, times the organizational level. So think of the organization as the number one. So a maximum level of organization means that that force, 80 in this case, is the combat capability of the troops. The more the organizational level of that unit decreases, the more that 80 amount, despite not actually decreasing in number, its combat effectiveness does get reduced massively. Now, this is one of the most important concepts in the science of war. Soldiers are humans. So, 
even battle fatigue, so breaking the enemy lines, capturing massive amounts of territory will have a massive decrease in the organization level of that unit. A unit division that started its offensive in a one kilometer line managed to break into the enemy forces. So it was holding a line here, it pushed in forces and it managed to create a front line like this. So this unit now it's here. So that this unit, which is here now, has to cover a much wider area. So that much wider area is it's much harder to maintain. So the communication network getting stretched. And the more that the unit pushes on and pushes on the enemy and expands the front line even further, the harder it is to maintain an organization. So the more but the less battle effective that unit will be. Now, another point that impacts organization will be entrenchment, something that many people tend to forget. If you have, in any terrain, well, terrain plays important role, entrenchment is the key. And when I'm, when I'm going to refer to entrenchment, and many military analysts do inform to entrenchment, a simple form of entrenchment is this thing. So having a trench and staying in the trench and literally protecting and uh, staying there, get, you get protected. So as you receive artillery power, firepower and your morale gets decreased, the less casualties you take means the organization gets reduced lower and lower and lower. Now we have better levels of defenses, for example, the Hindenburg line, World, World One, where you have one, two, three lines of entrenched positions. You have even harder levels of entrenchments, which is like concrete boxes, which have big cans inside and can maintain heavy power. And most importantly from all, you have cities. Cities are by nature entrenched positions. That's something very vital. So within a city, units move very slowly. It's much harder to lose organization if you are within the open city, while in open terrain, it's much, much easier to lose uh, your organization. And now I'm going to give you a very <coughs> clear example of, of a battle, let's say. Imagine the battle of how organization is the deciding factor of success or failure. So, for example, here we have a case where here, imagine, is the green dots are forests, for example. The yellow dots are like cities. So you have a big city here, uh, two smaller villages here, and the yellow are, are, the, are the roads. And the line in between is the front line. Now, let's say the defender is the red guys, okay? And this is the front line. So the, you have the division here, you have the, uh, the front line and their troops spread out. And for simplistic purposes, let's say uh, purple is the armored capabilities or the better troops of the division. And for the enemy, the gray troops are the armored troops. Now, in war, this is not the case. This is the case for the war. So what I did here is to show the concept of the folk of war in literal terms, as Klaus Schubert said. The defender can't really know exactly where the enemy is in very precise terms. And this is a key. So in, in this example, you have the battle plan of the black team. Well, the aim of the black team Let's say, as you can see, they don't have that much troops, but they have troops uh, enough to be able to break the line. So let's say they do this and they manage to push the line like this. What do we see here now? What do we see here is the black team managed to attack, break the front line. So it broke the front line here. Okay, so as it managed to break the front line, me as the defender, let's say the red team, now all of this has become the fog of war. I don't know what's happening. I've lost communication with my units, in this case, my units over here and over here. And I'm kind of gradually losing communication of this. And most importantly from all, my communication lines, which are the roads, are getting threatened.
Now, this is a really big issue. And here comes the importance of organizational in war. So in, in this scenario, as we move forward, the black team will continue their assault and probably their main objective will be to destroy the communication lines. So destroy communication of the division with, with its units. So it, that division, the red team, may completely lose the battle without actually losing more than 5 or 6 percent of its total force. It's very vital for that division to be able to understand the situation and to understand what might happen to avoid the scenario of loss of organization. So in this unfortunate scenario where they do continue the attack and the red guys do not react accordingly and you reach a situation when the front line looks more like this. So let's say this is they already captured this territory. You will have a scenario where these troops over here, their morale, their battle effectiveness, all of their ability to fight has massively decreased. So, as mentioned here, their organizational level is becoming very dangerous and they may get routed. The concept of getting routing means that your forces starting to panic and as they start to panic and they abandon their entrenched positions we mentioned earlier they abandon their heavy equipment their battle effectiveness drastically reduces so even if you have equivalent forces on the enemy or gradually lower forces than the enemy you may end up in a position where your total force gets annihilated mainly because you are unable to maintain good organization now, in this scenario, was there a right solution? Well, not really. The concept here is, it is important for the divisional commander and for the each individual unit to know, either pre-plan how to react to various situations, and most importantly, how what do you aim to protect while fighting. And one of the most important things is to understand as a commander that maintaining an organization, high organization of your units, so maintaining your communications, uh, don't make your units move too much, retreating units cause decreasing organization will be a very negative cause uh, in the war. So it's something that sometimes you will do, but you should always be careful in doing. Now, this has been a very small introduction to the concept of organization, and I will be using organization as a reference to various battle scenarios I'm going to discuss later on. Uh, in later episodes, we're going to go dig deeper into either other sectors of the uh, of warfare, for example, like firepower, and we will examine, for example, some scenarios. Uh, how a retreat is uh, conducted, how, a retreat, how retreat, uh should be done, how it should not be done, and also the concept of game theory in warfare. Thank you for watch watching, and please, if you have any questions, do write them in the comments, and if I have enough questions, I will make videos answering those questions. Thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye. I'm Andreas Panagis.